Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is all about my new signet ring. As a brand ambassador for Rough Signet Rings, I have been very lucky to work with them one-on-one -on -one to create my very own signet. So today, I wanna to share the entire process with you. I wanna give a little bit of history about signets in general, some of the things you might wanna keep in mind when it comes to fit, construction, design, all that good stuff, and then ultimately what I selected and why. So let's start at the very beginning. What is a signet? ring. A signet ring is an engraved ring typically adorned with someone's initials or a design and they date back to ancient times. In ancient Egypt, signet rings were used by queens and pharaohs to sign important documents before distinctive personal signatures became common practice. So as you can imagine, the individuals that had these signets kept them under lock and key. They were very protected and they were often destroyed when the wearer passed away. Nowadays, that isn't really the case. They aren't used so much for their original purpose any longer. They're more just decorative and jewelry. So when it comes to the use of them, we tend to use them more as an heirloom. They tend to be passed down for from generation to generation and then often gifted for special occasions. So you'll often see that a, a signet ring will be commissioned for a graduation or a wedding or an important birthday like I had mine done. And they're a great, great way to commemorate not only family history but also a momentous event. Now if you want to get your own signet ring, I think there are a couple things you should keep in mind to really hone in on something that's going to be perfect for you. So let's start that off with shape. When it when it comes to signets, I thought there were only two obvious options, round and square, but as I delve deeper, I realized that really the possibilities are endless and you can choose pretty much anything that you like, but today I'm going to focus on the six designs offered by Rough Signet Rings because I think they offer a beautiful selection and I'm sure you're going to find something in this mix to suit your personal stature and style. So first up is a straight oval. This is far and away the most classic signet shape available and for obvious reasons, it's one of Ruff's most popular designs. So in their own words, this shape is a classic oval that is tailored to an individual's engraving. It could therefore be a taller oval or a fatter oval to perfectly encompass the particular device. This minute adjustment to dimensions applies to all shapes, of course. It's the most popular because Signet Ring is a very traditional product and it shouldn't be all singing and dancing with bells on it. The straight oval is undoubtedly the conservative ring of choice. So based on that description alone, I'm sure you can guess which shape I went with, and I couldn't be happier about it, but we'll get into more of that in just a little bit. Next up is bulbous oval, which is best characterized as chunky. The bulbous oval has gold bulked up on its shoulders and is therefore a much heavier ring than its counterpart, the straight oval. It is also a good illustration of a shape that cannot be stamped out, which I think really speaks to the overall quality and craftsmanship that you get from a trusted signet ring or jeweler house like Ruff's. So just as the name suggests, this is quite literally just a round shape. Um, sometimes it can look a little bit cumbersome, but I think that when done with the perfect uh, design that perfectly complements a round shape and then also done with expertise, it can look absolutely lovely. Now, when it comes to classic signet shapes, the cushion is one for the books. Based on Ruff's description, the cushion comes second to the straight oval and it's more subtle than either the round or the Oxford. Plus, it was a favorite in the Victorian days, so it's absolutely something that's gonna speak to people that like a more Victorian feel to their jewelry. I think it's a very elegant design and definitely a lovely choice depending on your individual engraving. Now, if you're looking for something a little less conventional, Ruffs also offers an octagon. This is definitely out of the box when it comes to typical ring shapes and especially signet designs, but I think that it's really fun. And if your personal style is very expressive and very unique, then I think this is definitely going to be something that works for you. And last but not least is the Oxford. So although many engravings suit round shapes beautifully, some need a square frame and the Oxford fills this role beautifully. So by rounding the corners, Ruffs presents a ring that is not as stark as a square or a rectangle proper, but it still gives the device the edge it demands. It's also a heavier ring, so this is definitely, this is definitely a ring that makes more of a statement. Now second to the shape that you pick, I think the metal that you choose is 
pretty much the most important thing that you can decide when it comes to your, your personal ring. So like most jewelry, they do offer a variety of metals. And I think that it's important to understand a little bit about each to make the right choice for you. So today I'm gonna go over some of the most common. Now, given that pure gold is 24 carats and thus 24 parts pure gold, any carat below that is made of a nine, 12, 14, or 18 parts pure gold and then other metals. These are typically copper, silver, and zinc. So these various mixtures contribute to the hue and the durability of each, and it's important to understand the pros and the cons in order to make the best decision. The first thing to note about 10 karat gold is that it contains more alloy than gold, with 41.7% gold and 58.3% alloy. And then also 10 karat can tarnish a little bit more quickly than larger carats, but it is also typically more durable than those larger carats. Now, 14 karat seems to be the most popular because it strikes a lovely balance of hue and durability. Typically, if you do want to wear your ring regularly and you work with your hands a lot, exclu excluding um, major work, obviously don't wear it to a construction site, but if you do, then you might prefer a 14 karat four. It's, a li it's slightly higher durability. And last but not least for the sake of this video is 18 karat, my personal favorite. I've owned quite a few pieces of 18 karat gold over the years, and I haven't really noticed a difference in durability between it and my 14 karat gold pieces. That said, I have gone for high quality 18 karat and really trusted the craftsmanship behind it, but I just love it. I think that it has the beautiful gold hue that I love in gold jewelry. It complements my skin tone very well, and it just adds the perfect vibrance and light to my skin, so I personally love it, and it's definitely what I was gonna choose for this signet, even before talking to the Ruffs team and really understanding how they set their 14 and 18 apart from each other and really work to make Make sure that the 18 is durable. So now let's go over the type of engraving you can get and then we'll touch on the designs. So when it comes to an engraving there are typically three commonly used types. There's machine, laser, and hand. So machine engraving is, as the name suggests, done with a machine, and it's typically something that you find in mass market jewelers. It's readily available and relatively inexpensive to produce. So to create this type of engraving, the ring or the pendant is secured in place, and an engraving tool executes the inscription or design, while the engraver or the designer traces the pattern. So as you can imagine, this method can be limiting because the machinery is only capable of producing the templates it is equipped with. So you have to choose what's available and you're left with very little room for creativity. Also, as with most mechanically produced items, the engravings tend to be very precise and very neat with very little, if any, variation from piece to piece. So along those same lines, laser engraving is similar to machine engraving in that it uses a machine and it does have some limited creativity involved, but it is a little bit more forgiving than machine engraving when it comes to your choices. In this case, a design is programmed into a computer and then produced by a laser. So unlike machine engraving that is limited to only a set number of templates, laser engraving allows for more customization. And then another benefit of laser engraving is that it can be used on a variety of metals, including gold. So you can also have it done on titanium and stainless steel. Then last but not least is my personal favorite, hand engraving. As you can imagine, this is very time intensive and usually the price is representative of that, but I think that there is nothing more lovely when it comes to an engraving choice. It's just beautifully executed and often in reverse, which is just amazing to think about when you look at the intricacies and the detail. And then also, it's done on such a small surface that you really have to admire and respect the amount of craftsmanship that goes into it. So it's definitely a deeper engraving. It tends to be slightly imperfect though it, you can't tell with the naked eye, but if you look really closely, you can see the little nicks um, here and there from the, the tools that make the engraving. And I just think that it's absolutely worth looking into if you do want a piece that's gonna be perfectly customized to you because it has endless flexibility. You can work with a designer one-on-one -on -one to come up with a unique design for you and then they'll literally hand execute it. So it's much more flexible. And then also it just really speaks to 
the craftsmanship and the quality behind a handmade item that I personally really love. So now let's go over the individual designs that you can choose from. First up is heraldry, which is essentially the system by which coats and arms and other armorial bearings are devised, described, and regulated. So a family crest or a coat of arms is a heraldic design that represents a family or families, person, state, organization, or corporation. And given the historical purpose of a signet, you can imagine that these are a very popular choice for engravings. So oftentimes in this instance, a customer will either have their, their crest already accessible to them, or you can work with a team like the team at Ruffs to uncover yours and discover it. Now, not every family has a family crest, so keep that in mind. And if you don't uncover one, then don't be discouraged because you can come up with something custom and just as meaningful and special, I think. Next is heraldic symbols. Now, technically, a family crest is a heraldic symbol, but what I mean by this is more just symbolic images, so birds, feathers, flowers, different things like that. And when it comes to symbolism, there are countless options with different meanings to suit everyone. Next up is a monogram or your initials, and this is very popular when it comes to signets. This is something you'll typically find in mass-produced signet rings as well. There are definitely plenty of those online that you can find for different price points, and they'll have either one initial or your traditional monogram. And then last but not least is a 100% customized personal design. Now, this is something that is definitely not going to be available at mass market produced jewelers, but if you do work with a very small design house and jewelry house like Ruffs, they can work with you one-on-one -on -one to come up with a design that's 100% unique, and I just love this. I think it's definitely a benefit of creating something bespoke and then also working with someone with an immense knowledge and then also just an incredible wealth of craftsmanship at their hands. It's definitely going to be a pricier option depending on who you go with, but I just think that it, it's another great way to really speak to who you are. And I've definitely seen some amazing, creative, and just delightful designs that really say something about you. And if it is a piece that you want to wear regularly, I think that the design you choose should be representative of what you want. So out of all of the options that we've gone through, definitely spend some time to come up with something that just feels right to you. Don't pick something because you think you have to pick it for a signet because really the possibilities are endless and you should ultimately choose what speaks to you and makes you feel good. So now let's go over what I selected and why. So like I mentioned earlier, I went with the straight oval because it is the most traditional and it definitely speaks to my jewelry tastes. I have collected a ton of signet ring images and I shared those with the team over at Ruffs and they helped guide me to choose something that aligned with what I had in my mind and the straight oval was definitely representative of that. I also went with 18 karat gold because like I said, I just love it. I think it's absolutely beautiful. It suits me, my personal skin tone and my style very well and it complements the other jewelry that I have. And then I also went with a smaller size to fit my pinky. I have chosen to wear my signet on my pinky finger because I like that it makes a statement because not everyone wears a ring on their outer digits basically but then on top of that it's still subtle and small enough to not be overpowering so it's just the perfect balance for my personal jewelry tastes and then when it comes to the design i went with a symbol i knew i wanted something personalized because that's why i like signets but honestly i felt a little overwhelmed about what to choose when i sat down to actually do it so I scoured the internet, I found countless inspiration images, and I loved a lot of them, but nothing really spoke to me. So what I did was I texted my sisters and I asked them, when you think of me, what's an animal or a phrase or an expression that instantly comes to mind? And almost immediately they both agreed on bumblebees because they said a bumblebee is small but strong and definitely resilient, and that reminded them of me, which I love. I instantly loved that. And so then I looked into bumblebees more and I was completely in love with what they actually represent when it does come to symbolism. So bumblebees are often connected to the sun and they often represent brightness. It also symbolizes community, cooperation, hard work, and personal power, which are things
things that I absolutely love and strive for in my everyday life. And then on top of that, they also serve as a reminder to pursue your dreams no matter how great they seem and to also extract the sweetness of life. I mean, how amazing is that? These are definitely things that I want to be reminded of on a daily basis. So I sent over my interest in bumblebees to the Ruffs team and they sent back some amazing um, old designs and I selected my favorite which has a lovely halo or crown of roses and a beautiful bumblebee design in the middle. It's absolutely perfect. I could not love it more and I just it absolutely speaks to my personal style in so many ways and I am just completely over the moon with it. It's the perfect piece for me. And there you have it. That's a quick 101 on signet rings in general and what you should keep in mind when you go to get your own. And then also the one that I selected and why. I've also put all of this information together in an ebook. It's completely free. I'll put the link down below. That way you can refer to it as you need and take it with you to different jewelers or on this journey. And I cannot thank Ruffs enough for this amazing gift. It's just everything that I wanted and more. They're craftsmanship, attention to detail, their customer service, it all far exceeded my expectations and I cannot recommend them enough. So I'll link everything down below and like always thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Have a great day.